If you're called upon to use molar mass in a calculation, you might be wondering, should you use grams or kilograms? If you're doing physics, it's almost certainly going to be kilograms. If you're doing chemistry, might be grams, might be kilograms. Grams is what you use when you're doing basic calculations involving chemical reactions. You look up the masses of your various atoms on a periodic table, you add them up for the molecules, and that will tell you the molar mass of each of those molecules in grams. Kilograms are what you use when you're doing calculations with the ideal gas law, thermal energy, heat capacity, things like that. Those are all things that fall into the category of physical chemistry, and they overlap with physics. Now, to find molar mass in kilograms, you start out the same way as before. You add up the numbers to get your molar masses in grams, and then you just divide by 1,000 to get kilograms. And toward the end of the video, I'll do an example of that. But now here's the question. What if you're still not sure? How do you ascertain, once and for all, what units you're supposed to use? So here we have a couple of formulas for root mean squared velocity for molecules of an ideal gas. One of these m's stands for molar mass, and one of them does not. This one is molar mass. It's the mass of one mole of your gas measured in kilograms. This, on the other hand, is molecular mass. That's the mass of one single molecule of your gas measured in kilograms, which of course will be a tiny number. Now it's easy enough to convert back between these two because the molar gas constant R is equal to the Boltzmann constant K times Avogadro's number, and similarly, the molar mass M is equal to the molecular mass M times Avogadro's number. And just to make that crystal clear, these are the units, kilograms per mole, kilograms per molecule, and of course Avogadro's number is molecules per mole. So if you know what one of these is, it's easy enough to convert and find the other. But the real question is, what happens when some formula drops in your lap and you don't know what the M is? How would you sort that out? I'll show you how using this. Remember that the molar gas constant R is equal to 8.314 joules per mole degree Kelvin. This unit here is going to help us decide what's going on with this, because a joule is equal to a kilogram times meter squared over second squared. So the quick and dirty way to ascertain what's going on with this m is to notice there's a kilogram here, which is up there, which is in there. So we need a kilogram down here to cancel that out. How do we know the kilograms need to cancel? Simple. There's no kilograms over here. Velocity is measured in meters per second. Well, there's some meters and seconds. But we need all of this other stuff to go away. So a kilogram down here is needed to cancel a kilogram up there. And for that matter, we also need a mole down here to cancel the mole that is up here. Now, if that's not quite clear enough, I'll go through it in detail. All of this is just the units for the molar gas constant. There's moles and kelvins in the denominator, and then that's the joule in the numerator. We're multiplying that times temperature which is kelvins, and then we're dividing by something which we're trying to figure out. Now you can see we have meters squared over second squared, and when we take the square root of all of that, we will get meters per second, which is what we want. So we want to keep the meters and seconds, but we want to cancel out everything else. Well, the kelvins will cancel straight away. We're left with kilograms and moles. To cancel those, we need this. So there you have it, kilograms per mole. Let's do an example problem. So here's a simple problem. Find the root mean squared velocity for nitrogen gas at a temperature of 300 kelvins. So the question is, what exactly are we going to put into here? We'll start with the periodic table. We look up nitrogen. We see that the atomic mass is 14.0067. I'll round that off to 14. We have to multiply by 2 
because nitrogen is diatomic, and so we get 28. That's the molar mass in grams, grams per mole. But that's not what we want. We want kilograms, so we divide by 1,000. That's the number that goes right into there. And if you whip out your calculator, push some buttons, you should get this. 517 meters per second. That's a little faster than the speed of sound in air, and that makes sense because air is mostly made of nitrogen. If you mistakenly put in 28, you get a much smaller number, much less than the speed of sound, and that doesn't make any sense at all. Thank you very much for watching. Please like and subscribe. If you're interested in being tutored online by me personally, I am available until further notice. There's a link for info on that in the description down below, along with some links to those other videos that I mentioned.